Davis and the year Coppin' Seas. Now he's open all night. Open all night. In old Point, Tony Griffith, this way and that. The times he had some money, every time he was flat. He always seemed to manage, so he never seemed to sit. Sure it was a struggle, but he always paid the rent. Now he's open all night. Yeah. Open all night. And now old Gordon runs a grocery store With a wife named Gretchen Who hangs around the house And her son named Jerry by a previous spouse Gordon sits behind the counter In a hocker to his nose In a dinner in a pickle In a store that's never closed And he's open all night 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 Coffee. It's more like it. You okay, Mr. Feaster? I'm uh, fine. I enjoy getting my windpipe crushed. Hey, don't joke about it. In this neighborhood, a guy could want a cup of coffee bad enough to kill you for it. I never thought it would be you. Steve! The guy at the donut shop says there won't be any more chocolate eclairs until 3 a.m. So what'd you get? Nothing. Guess you can tell who the rookie is, huh, Mr. Feaster? It's my new partner, Edie. She's a girl. Steve and Edie, this could be the start of something big. Not if she doesn't shape up. Feaster. Feaster. I recognize that name from a report. Weren't you robbed recently? Yeah, last Tuesday, by my own night manager. Your night manager robbed you? You took the report. <laughs> I make a lot of reports. I can't be expected to remember every detail. You might remember this one. The guy who robbed me had only one eye and one leg. Uh, what was he wearing? <laughs> change, please. No change. Yes, change. No change. See the sign? No change without a purchase. Yes, purchase. Purchase what? What do you want to purchase? Change. <laughs> Give him some change, Mr. Feaster. The guy's from out of town. Fine. Why doesn't he take a free cup of coffee while he's at it? Cream. Oh, groovy. Uh, yeah, yo, make yourself at home. The belly dancing starts in 15 minutes. Belly dancing, hubba hubba. Boy, I can't sleep. Let the music begin. Gretchen, don't wear your bathrobe down here. This is a place of business. Hello, Mrs. Feaster. Mrs. Feaster? Feaster. I don't want to go to bed, Gordon. You know, I hate to sleep alone. I always hear. Well, as soon as I get a new night manager, you won't have to sleep alone. I don't want to sleep with a night manager. I want to sleep with you. Yeah, what if the guy's a low light? Will you get out of here. We better go, Steve. Don't we have work to do? Yeah, let's go next door. Check out that donut shop. See if those eclairs are ready. So long, feasters. 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 Where are you going? Eclairs. <laughs> Gretchen, what is it with you? I... Oh. I'm bored. Gordon. I'm bored out of my gourd. I'm a fun person. I'm not having any fun. Because you're always working. When we got married, you promised me to have fun. If I didn't want to have fun, I would have stayed married to my second husband, that movie usher. He was no fun. Yeah, well, I'm fun. I'm a lot of fun. You want to see fun? Here. <laughs> fun? Want to see more fun? Wait. Here, here. Hey, oh. Fun, fun. You want to see something that's really fun? Here, here. I'm going to bed alone. Gretchen. Gretchen, come here. Now, try to understand. You see that sign? It says open all night. Now, now that means that somebody's got to be here 24 hours a day. Now, I don't have a night manager, so who's that going to be if it's not me? Hi, Mom. Hi, Gordon. No need to look any further. Didn't you once say that Terry had the makings of a night manager? No, I said the markings of a night crawler. He's your stepson. 
John Gordon? The trouble with you is you never took the time to get to know him. He has lots of friends. <laughs> well, he does. And he loves nature and little animals. <laughs> Especially rodents. He knows the Latin name for every species of rat. All right, he knows rats. Uh, let him get a job in the hold of a ship. Oh, he loves a store. He told me he wants to take it over when you die. <laughs> what a sweet kid. What if I decide not to die? Well, that's up to you. <laughs> These cupcakes are a total rip. And don't eat them. Okay, here. <laughs> I swear I'm never gonna die. Guy, then I'll never be night manager. <laughs> You'll never be night manager because whenever I leave you alone in the store, you screw everything up. Well, I only went to McDonald's for 20 minutes. <laughs> it was the first day of Chicken McNuggets. <laughs> Everybody was there. Everybody except the guy who backed the truck up to my front door and took out $4,500 worth of canned goods. Yeah, well, it, it wasn't just canned goods, Gordon. They stole a lot of sandwich meat, too, you know. You take food stamps? Only with a purchase, sir. Great. Let me have about a half a litre of them bacon rinds and about a gram of breath mints. Anything else? Do you have the Wall Street Journal? I'm afraid we don't. What would you do? Put your cash in a T-bill or take a chance on a money market fund? What's a T-bill? Well... That's why you're where you are, and that's why I'm where I am. Okay. Um, your name is... Uh... Scott Davis. Okay, Scotty. Scott! Scott, uh, have you ever been the night manager of a store like this? No, I worked in a shoe store. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, I'm just out of curiosity. <laughs> what if somebody wanted some, uh, some shoes that weren't uh, within easy reach, like on a shelf that... Uh... Ladder! I'd get a ladder! Okay, okay, take it easy. You take it easy! <laughs> Taking it easy. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you why you left the shoe store? My boss says I was mean to the customers. <laughs> Were you? Sometimes you gotta smack people around. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, we'll let you know, Scott. When? Shortly. <laughs> Soonly, uh, soon. Uh huh. I know what this means. The old kiss of room. I've been down that yellow brick road before. But you haven't heard the last of me. Vomit brick! Well, who do I hire? That guy or the one who tried to snort the salt? Well, either one. The guy who snorted the salt was less abrasive, but the midget seemed to have more retail experience. Don't you understand? It's not a question of either or. We need help. We're dying here. Now, all I ask is that I have more of a choice than a salt-sniffing junkie and a guy who's going to bite customers on a kneecap. I know, young man. No, I am not hiring Terry. Terry never bit anyone on the kneecap. We don't know that for sure. Morning. Hi, honey. How are you? I didn't sleep too good last night. I know. I heard you bang at the moon. Gordon, you give him a chance to eat his breakfast. <laughs> that's not breakfast. That's nuclear waste. <laughs> Don't you know what's in those things you're eating? Yeah, I like nitrates. <laughs> 
<laughs> Fill a gurgle machine. I filled it last night. Well, it's empty now. I know, I got thirsty. <laughs> Fill the machine. You're gonna be sorry you treated Terry this way when he goes off to college. Where's he gonna go? The University of Disgusting? <laughs> Where I strawberry gurgle. Use grape. That stuff purple? <laughs> yes. Gordon, there are green grapes, you know. Hey, look, we're a team. If I'm late for roll call, you're supposed to cover for me. When they called your name, I said here. You're supposed to say yo. <laughs> Sorry. We're closed. All right, cut the comedy, Mr. Feaster. We just rounded up a suspect with one arm and one leg. It's not one arm and one leg, it's one eye and one leg. I told you, Steve. Okay, we got the wrong woman. It's not a woman! It's a man! A one-eyed, one-legged man! Can you remember that, huh? Yeah, sure, I'm gonna remember one eye and one leg. Can you remember man? Yo! I <laughs> leg, I leg. I leg, I leg. I leg. Uh, Mom? Uh-huh. Uh, can I have some uh, dessert as a reward for filling the gurgle machine? What would you like, honey? Something chocolate. Well, how about a brownie? Dominus Probiscum. You know, if he were a laboratory rat, he'd be dead. He needs his energy, Gordon. These are his wonder years. You guys find what you want yet? Uh, you got any, uh, franks and beans, man? Uh, right there, gourmet section. Gordon, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but about this night manager stuff, but Terry would make a good... No! Uh, he can't handle it. The neighborhood is about as safe as Belfast. <laughs> the night manager has to be an intimidating brute. He's got to be as big as a house and as strong as a horse. And the bullets have to bounce off his head. If he's hit in the stomach with a baseball bat, ideally the bat should break. Plus, he has to be able to make change. The gentleman coming in the doorway is exactly the kind of guy I'm talking about. Uh, you guys gonna pay for that stuff you're putting in your pockets? <laughs> Stop those punks! Can you make change? <laughs> it's not important. You'll learn. Sixty-five, seventy-five, five dollars. That's good, Robin. Have a nice weekend. Uh, just a minute, Sonny. I gave you a ten. Uh, you gave me a five. <clears throat> no, it was a ten. You gave me a f- Put it out! Here, lady. Here's your other five. Take it. Forget about the whole thing, right? <laughs> Come back and see us! What's the matter with you? She gave me a five. Well, let me tell you something about good and bad public relations. Have a nice weekend? That's good. Crushing her was bad. Bye. She gave me a five. Put it on top of a cash register. Here it is. I was wrong. Crushing's too good for her. That's the same thing that used to happen to me all the time at the box office. What box office? Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Hall in, uh, in New York? Could be. <laughs> is that where you're from? Where? New York. New York, Chicago, Houston. Somewhere around there. What, is that where your uh, family's from? I got no family. What, no mother, no father? No! All right. Your life is your business. But uh, don't go around strangling the customers indiscriminately. Eh? She lies. I know, I know, but the penalty for lying is not death. Are you ready, Gordon? Oh, hello. Mr... Robin. That's right, Mr. Robin. I don't believe you've ever met my son. Terry? Terry, this is the new night manager, Mr. Robin. Hello, Terry. Oh, hi. He's not 
gonna hurt you, honey. Well, Gordon? Well, what? He forgot. I knew he'd forget. I told you he'd forget. He forgot. Forgot what? It's Terry's birthday. Gee, I forgot. I made reservations for the three of us at Terry's favorite restaurant. I thought they closed the International House of Sugar. <laughs> two is more, two's Benedictus Est. What? You heard me. What's going on? I'd love to go with you, but I'm breaking in a new man. You know. Yeah, he hates me, just like my real dad and all the dads that lived with us after him. Terry. <laughs> I think you should go. It's the kid's birthday. It's important. I don't want to go. I don't want to be with him. He gives me the creeps. Change. I try to change, believe me, but there's just some... <laughs> change, yeah, right. Uh, uh, Robin, give the guy some change, will you? You really ought to go. The kid wants you to. Being with his old man can make a difference in a kid's life. Well, you're trying to get rid of me? I'm not going to leave you here alone. How do I know I can trust you? I give you five. You gave me a one. One, yes, my mistake. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I can trust you. Uh, I'm going to go to the corner and get a gift for Terry. There's just a gas station on the corner. I know. I'm going to get him a map. Maybe he'll go somewhere. <laughs> well, Bozo, I've been waiting by the telephone for three days. Do I get the job or not? Well, unfortunately, I hired somebody else. Oh, I see. You didn't hire me because I'm white. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. What's the problem, Mr. Feast? Butt out! Now, wait a minute. No, you wait a minute. What makes you so tough when you come down off those stilts? <laughs> I'm not on stilts. <laughs> You're lucky. You saved yourself a terrific beating. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing leaving the store unattended? It's not unattended. It's a customer down there. He wants to know how much his broom costs. There's no price on it. It's our broom. It's not for sale. Oh, well, should I just give it to him? Get out of here. First, can I use the bathroom? No. Well, what... <laughs> By the way, thanks for the map. That's the geek you wanted me to make night manager. He's trying to please you, Gordon. He's hurt. But you hired Robin, and he's trying to prove that he's worthy of your trust, but all he gets is abuse, criticism, and a map of the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> you better have a good reason for being up here. Gordon! I do, sir. Mel <laughs> Litwack, FBI. May I come in and talk to you for a minute? Uh... Well, what about? You know this man? Yes, I do. It's you. <laughs> All right. I mean, do you recognize this man? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, what do you want him for? I'm not at liberty to say. <coughs> then I don't know him. How about you, ma'am? You recognize this man? Oh, my God, it's him. That's our night manager. He works for us. Hmm. Sorry, we couldn't help. <laughs> he was reported working in your store, Mr. Feaster. By who? My stepson? No, sir. Then who? Sorry, we're not allowed to reveal our midgets. Our sources. <laughs> well, that's not the guy. Mr. Feaster, by refusing to cooperate, you run the risk of prosecution for aiding and abetting a fugitive. Gordon! Can I see that picture again? Mm -hmm. Robin! I didn't recognize him. He wears a different belt. Mm. What time does he come to work tonight? He gets oh, to work at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock? 10 o'clock. He gets to work Which is it? Which is it? 10 o'clock. 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. Thank you. Oh, if there's any trouble before that, give me a call. This is where I'm staying. Oriental body massage? <laughs> oh, uh... 
That's just a, uh, that's another place we've got under surveillance. There's my card. House of bondage? I'm, uh, I'm always running out of twine. There we go. The Mr. and Mrs. Smith Motel. Yeah. Yeah, that's the place. Room 12. Oh, uh, a Japanese girl answers. Ask for the Falcon. Naked. What are you stuffing your face with? Oh, uh, uh, frozen fish sticks. Mmm. You know, some people actually wait for those to thaw out before they eat them. Not if you like them crunchy. Get out of here. Where's Robin? He'll be here. What's it to you? Well, if I was night manager, I'd never be late. Well, that's kind of a moot point, isn't it? Who are you calling a mute? <laughs> I didn't say mute. I said moot. Well, it's pronounced mute. <laughs> hey. What do you want? No big guy? Oh, big guy's not around. Good, change. Why don't you ever buy anything? I have everything. <laughs> Except change. Yes, change. Mr. Feaster, where is he? Oh, uh, hi, uh, Falcon. Falcon. Mr. Feaster, I've been waiting at the laundromat for two hours now. Where is he? Oh, piece the hell out of me. He's usually very punctual. Harboring a fugitive is no joke. Who's joking? Who's harboring? Well, then where is he? I don't know. I'm right here. <laughs> Robin, what were you doing in the cooler? Freezing. Been in there for two hours. You're almost out of Miller's. Hi, Mill. Who tipped you off, Robin? Nobody. I saw your car outside, so I snuck in the back and hid in the cooler. He had nothing to do with it. How'd you know that was my car? License plate says FBI Milt. The missus thought it'd be cute. It's not cute. He's stupid. Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Robin, uh, uh, what are they after you for? They think I robbed the box office at Carnegie Hall. Did you? No. Well, then why'd you run? You see, I was working alone that day, and Itzhak Perlman was rehearsing on stage for a concert, so I stepped inside to listen. It was beautiful. Beethoven's concerto for a violin in D major. Old Itz was fiddling his buns off. When I got back to the box office, the cash was gone. I believe you. Hey, if I'm cleared, I'd like to come back. That is, if the job is still open. The job is yours. Come on, Robin. I still got some underwear in the dryer. Right. See you, Mr. Feaster. So long, Terry. Good luck to you, babes. Oh, uh... Uh, yeah, babes, uh, they don't give you the chair. It's a nice dude, but, but he'll never beat the rap, so you might as well make me the night manager. Not in a million years. I wouldn't give you that job if you were the last person on earth. What's your excuse now, Trench Mountain? Just hide my stepson. <laughs> Tuesday has the world's greatest lover lost his charm. The Fonz fears the worst when he makes a pass at the wrong young lady on Happy Days. Then Laverne's lost earring leads to a hilarious encounter with a Hollywood hotshot on Laverne and Shirley. Now stay tuned as Jan's ex-husband says he wants her back on Making a Living next on ABC.